Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Pete. I have the privilege of serving the First United Methodist Church here in Brookings, South Dakota. I want to thank you for joining us. I see this midweek as an opportunity to pause in the midst of everything else and just take a breath. We read from Scripture. We will pray together. I'm following a series called Psalms for a Pandemic, where we have been looking at various psalms that can give us courage in these times of pandemonium and difficulty. In a moment, we're going to look at a psalm. If you haven't already got your Bible, maybe you would think about doing that now. But first, let's pray together. O oh God, beyond description, you are like the wind in the trees. We can see you at work, but cannot grasp the size and the shape of you. We continue to see your presence in the way the sun rises each day, the way the rain renews the earth, and the wind announces the changing of the seasons. And so we thank you for, for today. Thank you for new opportunities to live life and to love the people around us. Help us in our worship. Breathe your Holy Spirit into our words that we might have courage for life. Teach us how to hear you in this time that we spend together. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so tonight, I take us to another psalm. In our series, Psalms for a Pandemic, we're going to look at Psalm 13. I must admit, I feel like I've had enough of this coronavirus. I'm tired of being socially distant, but don't think you're going to come any closer to me. I'm tired of seeing the numbers climbing. Even here in Brookings, we're seeing our numbers climb each day. But don't let anyone tell you they're dropping. It's better to be honest than just to close our eyes to it. I'm tired of wearing this mask. But don't stop because it is the only way of limiting the virus. In South Africa, we have a word for this kind of tiredness. It's called khatvo. I'm not going to translate it for you. I will just leave it there. But I have found a psalm that sums up my feelings. Psalm 13. You will see it's called a psalm of David. And many people have speculated why this psalm gets attached to David. Some have said after his death threats from Saul, David could have prayed a prayer like this. Others have said after he was defeated in battle, he felt like this. Some have said perhaps after he'd been betrayed by his son Absalom, this is the kind of prayer David would have prayed. But this is a psalm that's really helpful for people who are feeling sad or depressed or facing a virus. So when you are hurtful, here's a psalm for you, Psalm 13. I'm really grateful to have Bani here tonight to read for us. Hear this reading from Psalm 13. To the choir master, a psalm of David. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. And thank you, Bunny, for reading for us. This psalm can be broken into three parts. It begins with a complaint, middle section has a request, and then the final section speaks about God's salvation. 
So I will walk us through in those three parts, the complaint, the request, and the salvation. Here's the complaint. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long must I take counsel in my soul, have sorrow in my heart all day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Did you hear it? How long must I carry on like this? And we've all asked this question. How much longer must we avoid this virus? How long until we have a vaccine? How long until my life is made better? Maybe, maybe you've asked the how long of other things. How long until I finish my studies and can begin earning some money? Or at the other end, how long until I can get to retire from this job? Sadly, some might be feeling, how long until I can be free from this abusive relationship? Some might be saying, how long until I'm free of my back pain? Or free from my arthritis? Or free from my blood pressure? And all of us, how long until God answers my prayers? And I'm offering Psalm 13 as a prayer for when God doesn't immediately answer our complaints. It's used by generations of people of faith. And the good news is we can pray like this. We can literally go to God and say, I've been praying and praying and praying. How long until you answer my complaints? Because it's not like God doesn't already know them. God knows the thoughts of our hearts. This is a way for us to get those thoughts out of our hearts into words. It allows us to acknowledge our feelings. Because only when we've acknowledged our feelings can we frame our request. So if you've ever felt bad about complaining, if you've ever felt like, well, I can't really tell God that I'm feeling fed up, you actually can. There are many psalms of lament, psalms where people bring their complaints before God. Like this psalm, how long, Lord, must I keep praying? And then, and then the request, Psalm 13, verse 3. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say I prevailed over him lest my foes rejoice because I'm shaken. Here's the request. Light up my eyes. Literally, give me back the glint in my eye. Perhaps better paraphrase, restore the joy of life to me. And surely, surely this is all of us. Lord, can we rediscover the joy of life? This virus, this virus sucks the joy out of life. We become so serious, so burdened, so argumentative with each other, so angry with people that don't hold my point of view. You need only to go to Facebook or Twitter to read the angry rant. The psalm says, Lord, put the glint back into my eye. Restore my joy to me. Sadly, you and I live in a society where, where our culture tries to persuade us that joy in life is attained through possessions. If only I had that thing that I don't have, I will be happy. Anyone been sucked into that? If only I had the next motor vehicle. And so I start to dream about that motor vehicle. If only I had the next house and I start to dream about the house. Maybe your requests are not as big. If only I had that particular item of clothing that I have seen. I know for me, if only I had the next guitar because, because you literally can't have enough guitars. But the one thing that this virus has taught us is that joy is not linked to stuff. The joy in our life doesn't come from possessions. Joy is far simpler. Time with family 
can give great joy. A walk on the beach or a walk in the mountains restores joy to the soul. A shower of rain, the sound of music, the color of a rainbow, these are the simple pleasures in life that can restore joy to us. And so I'm inviting us to join the prayer of this psalm. Consider and answer me, O Lord. Light up my eyes. And if I could invite us to look for the many, many ways that God supplies joy each day. Literally look out your window, see the flowers in your garden and discover joy in them. Which leads us into the third part of this prayer. Can you recall the first part was the complaint? Second part was the request. We come to the salvation. Psalm 13 verse 5. But I've trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. You see, the fact is, we can become so preoccupied with what's going wrong that we forget to see what's going right. And this prayer challenges us to see the blessings of God. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Out of his bounty, out of his treasures, he has blessed me. It's not to say you can't complain, but it is to say don't only complain. Look to the blessings God has given you. I'm reminded of a song written by a Methodist pastor. His name is Johnson Oatman Jr. A song that I grew up with from small. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. And so if I could challenge you to an exercise for this week. Challenge you just for a week, for seven days, to begin what some have called a gratitude journal. That at the end of each day, you would literally open a journal and write down the joys of your day. Write down those things that you are grateful for. I challenge you literally to write them down each day. You can complain about stuff, but make sure you've written down each day. And at the end, go back and discover the magnitude of God's blessings. Discover how often God blesses us. And we almost take them for granted because we allow our complaints to overshadow all the blessings. So the challenge, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Begin a gratitude journal and for a week, instill in yourself the practice of saying thank you to God. I will sing to the Lord, says the psalmist, because he has dealt bountifully with me. And so I'm going to invite you, invite you to sing with me. I'm going to take you back to Johnson Oatman's song as we sing together, Count Your Blessings. your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly And you will be singing as the days go by Oh, count 
Your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly And you will be singing as the days go by your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Oh, your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So thank you for joining me tonight. God bless you this week. Count your blessings. Receive a blessing. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the strength of his spirit go with you today, tonight, through tomorrow, and to the weekend. Good night. Oh, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done.